Uh, first item for me, then over to whoever's elected. So, first item of the agenda is election of committee chair. Please. I propose uh, uh, Councillor Palmer. No, I'll go for that. I'll second, yeah. All in favour of the key. Okay, over to you, Councillor Palmer. Thank you. Thank you for your vote of confidence. Um, we're going on to the uh, vice chair now. Any nominations? Well, ap apologies, but there aren't any. So. No, no apologies, right? So, on to the vice chair. Any nominations for the vice chair? Who was the last one? <laughs> you. Oh, go on then. I'll nominate Mel. Well, sir. Good night. Thank you. Thanks, Mel. Okay, then. So, that's, um, that's that part of the agenda completed. So, we can move on now to um, the report. Gareth, would you want to go through that? Uh, there's no declarations. Uh, obviously, I don't think so. But Yeah, uh, thanks, Chairman. Oh, oh, minutes. You go through the minutes of the last meeting. Okay, right? then. Well, if you want to bring them up, are you going to show them, Gareth? Um, I can do. Don't. Bear with me. Uh, sorry, just gonna find how to get back here now. Okay, so length of March. Apologies, Dan. Declarations, Dan. Read the minutes. Appraisal was presented. And after that, they identified the training needs, which were agreed. Um, attended the joint SLTC one, one voice Wales, and leadership in action is next week. Um, reports on the absence of work and no being for items closed at 608. <coughs> Would anybody like to propose that as a true record? Well, I, I suppose it sounds about right. I, is that a, a, a proposal or... I think so. Did, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll second that. Did we get these minutes with the calling notice? Yes. We did. I didn't see it. No, I didn't either. I got, I got the main one, the agenda, then I got um, the confidential one, but I didn't get anything else. Oh, no, sorry. Um, well, they've been on the website, so it's, you know, same time. So. They're always on the website. So, the next one, if we could have the minutes included, please, Gary. Yeah. Okay. So, moving on. Um, <coughs> Uh, just, just, uh, just. Sorry, sorry. Just to, just to pick up on the minutes. Sorry, is is it possible, Gareth, for you to forward the minutes to us by email? Uh, so well, norm normally, I work out. And normally, the normally should have gone out with the agenda. Yeah. But the same time as they go out with the agenda, they're posted on the website. As it as it didn't go out with the agenda, can you please forward them to us so I can put it in the folder that I've got. Thank you. Yeah, I'd say, oh, you can download it. Right, it's just the same thing. It'd be the same thing. Um, so I can send them on. Do we have any de declarations of interest before we move on? No. No? Okay, then. Right, Gareth, you want to... Uh... Yeah, uh, the first report on the appraisal system, um, just the first few chapters go into the background and, and the procedures identified by various organisations. Um, uh, as I'm employed under the um, NLCC, uh, sorry, NALC um, model contract. Um, the current appraisal is part of training development policy for staff and councillors and it states that uh, there should be an annual appraisal held in January in line with Town Council standing orders. 
Uh, the currently the appraisal form appendix A that we need to create mm -hmm. how the the appraisal goes because obviously it's based on that form being filled in prior mm -hmm. to the appraisal. Um, and I know the chair has mm -hmm. perhaps some ideas on moving that forward. We did look at it in the past um, when the last mm -hmm. time I had an appraisal, it was raised about using smart targets. Uh, mm -hmm. But at that time, uh, members endorsed the use of methodology in the uh, mm -hmm. training and development policy um, and it was left unchanged. Um, but as I said, the uh, chair believes the process should be made more efficient and consideration should be given to documentation and use. So what I've done then in the um, appendix mm -hmm. is show hours or as it stands mm -hmm. and then a, a range of different um, model types which, which are used by other councils um, and I, you know, I think it's dependent on how you view which appraisal documentation <laughs> would it inform the way we go forward, Chairman, unless you want to add to it. Well, yes, yes, there are a few things really. Um, I think um, why is there an appraisal? Uh, and that's uh, adequately covered in uh, your report 2.1. Um, and to me, there are three elements to the appraisal um, within this report. Who, con who conducts the appraisal? How is the appraisal, appraisal conduct conducted? And what happens to the report after the appraisal? So that we've got to consider, I think, <laughs> within this appraisal process. Uh, and according to the National Training Strategy, being a good employer, <laughs> if you look at 2-2, management of the clerk by full time <laughs> effective and cumbersome, as, as Gareth put in there, and should be delegated to the health presumably, which is the HR committee, but it also adds with a subcommittee, and a clerk's appraisal will be best undertaken by the full committee rather than the full council. Um, currently, the town mayor is responsible for some, uh, with, with the, as, I, as far as I can gather, within the. Within the uh, John, excuse me, but yes. I can hear you sometimes. When you when you lean back, I can hardly hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Gareth, is it, is it possible for me to mute yourself? Because the dog is um, <clears throat> making a snorry noise. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. So according to the National Training Strategy, being a good employer, if you look at 2-2, management of the clerk by full council is generally ineffective and cumbersome and should be delegated to a personnel committee, which I presume is the HR committee. And it adds with a subcommittee, <coughs> a council's appraisal, a, a clerk's appraisal will be best undertaken by a small committee rather than the full council. <coughs> and currently the town council is responsible, the mayor is responsible for, con for, for conducting the appraisal according to standing orders. But in fact, it was uh, under undertaken by me as the chair. Uh, so that needs to be changed, I appreciate chair, it. And standing orders do say it's you that undertake it. The chair of the committee undertakes. Okay, that's fine. So we don't yeah. need to change that. Um, after the... After the um, after we've conducted the appraisal, that I, I found a few, it raised a few questions in my mind on the, base, on, on the basis of my experience of running appraisals. Uh, and the, I, I contacted One Voice Wales and the development officer for North Wales <coughs> uh, during a, a phone call from, from One Voice Wales advised that it's normal for two or three councillors to conduct the interview which is at odds with 
uh, the clerk's view. Um, and the SLCC produced its advice in conjunction with One Voice Wales. However, um, the key it refers to a pray the, the key document refers to appraisers so how do we resolve this apparent com confusion um, because on one hand we have <coughs> uh, one voice wills supporting the lcc and then the advice with the development officer for uh, One Voice Wales saying that it's normal for two even more councillors to conduct the appraisal. So there seems to be an, an issue here and I don't know how we resolve that because the, the question is why have two councillors doing it rather than just the one? Um, I believe that having Two councillors would be would produce a balanced report to the benefit of the of the, of the town clerk. So that that's that's where I'm coming from on this. Um, I I think it would be to the town clerk's advantage, uh, and the, the benefit would be to the town clerk to have two appraisers to get a balanced report. Uh, and I, you know, I'm happy to open that up for discussion. Uh, could I just point out that I'm not sure, I'm not quite sure why the development officer said that because the standing orders are not standing orders produced by national associations of local clerks, as national associated local councils, one voice and one voice files. Yeah. So he's actually contradicting. The standing orders produced by One Voice Wales, but, uh, but you know, I I don't think there's a material problem if two people do a review. Um, you know, I, I don't think it's a critical. Um, Can I suggest but, we have a show of hands to, to see who but, thinks it's worthwhile? What, what was that, uh, Paul? Can I suggest we have a show of hands to see if it, we think it's worthwhile? Uh, well. Uh, uh, in, in a minute, can we can we do that in a minute? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, the, 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 it's laid out quite clearly by Gareth the value of an appraisal, and I'm looking to ensure that the benefits of the appraisal are best served uh, for the <coughs> because it is such an important thing and and um i i would i i think it would be of better value um to have uh, the chair and one nominated councillor to do this three would be far too many but the two i mm. think would, would 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 suffice so uh, unless uh, uh, Gareth, you think it, there wouldn't be an issue, um, but I, if you don't think it's an issue, can we put it now, as, as Paul suggested, to the HR committee uh, for their views? Would you support this or would you prefer not to? In, so, in support, if you are in support, can you raise your hand, please? <laughs> Okay, thank you. Um, the next thing, is, and, and Gareth raised this, the format. Which, uh, the current format of the document uh, doesn't um, meet the criteria uh, put forward in the, in the Good Employer's Guide. Uh, but as, as uh, Gareth pointed out, there are a couple of options in, in the appendices A and B. So really it's deciding if you've managed to read those, which you think would be better. Um, I think they're, they're more expansive and they meet 
the, the, the criteria of being a good employer. So having, I'm, sorry? sorry, having uh, having having gone through the process with Gareth, yeah. What what would your opinion be as to the uh, well, as to which one? The, the, I think it was A. Uh, can you can you put that one up, please, Gareth? I don't have it to hand. Have you got that to hand, Gareth? I think it was A, <laughs> the initial one. <coughs> You sound rough, Robin. Oh, sorry, I thought I was on mute. Playing <laughs> 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 not so quietly, I guess. So that's the current one. That's the current one, yeah. Um, um, this is the first example, which goes into tying it in with the job description. Uh, sorry about the dog. <laughs> I'll have to not take it. Forgot I had a meeting tonight. Um, just for different kind of look at the information, I'm babysitting a dog and I didn't expect it to be so noisy. Um, she's falling asleep and it's snoring. Um, so then that's that one. Then I think each one gets a bit more complex. Um, I think we start setting um, development needs, objective target setting here. Um, and then the final one again, I think. Yeah, it, it, it got targets for future planning. Yes. planning. And, Sorry, and then, I, I thought the second one met the criteria, right. better, criteria better met the criteria of of the being a good employer on the SLPC. So it's this one, yes. So that's adding that um, development needs, yeah? Yeah. And then some target setting. Yeah. Um, and then that was it really. Yeah. So it members, yeah. So, so I thought the second one <coughs> met the criteria was more uh, beneficial on both sides. Can I just say at this point that I've never in my life appraised anyone's work. So I'm going to be definitely guided by you guys who've done appraisals because to me, this is like a foreign language. Yeah. So, you know, I'm going to be guided by you guys on this. Robin? Um, I haven't seen your um, your job description or, or your or what you've got as, as performance objectives, but like it's, you know, I, 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 every appraisal I've done involves, usually would involve, you know, some assessment against those. Um, and then you know, the uh, kind of either a document by the employer or a document you agree together. Um, so I guess the first question is, you know, do you have, is it just the job description or do you have performance objectives already in place? Because some of them seem to lend themselves more to one or the other. Can, um, but I, can I come in on this one? Um, <laughs> Gareth hadn't had an appraisal for a couple of years and the appraisal that we started with um, was the old appraisal format that we ex expanded between us to set some of some objectives not not comprehensive but some objectives uh, and we I think we both agreed that that was adequate for, for at the time is that would you agree, Gareth? 
Yes, uh, and uh, you know, how can I say? It's very difficult, really, because I understand exactly what Councillor uh, Lovelock's saying. Having worked in, you know, principal authority, you have your key performance indicators, mm. and we work to that. We don't necessarily have that level of detail in terms of what we're achieving. At, uh, I mean, it's quite easy to establish them, but I'd hit them every year, like arrange twelve meetings a year, arrange X number of committees a year. So we could have key performance indicators, but that would mean we'd have to do some work and draw the next appraisal based on the business plan to see what indicators we, we, we are looking to achieve. Uh, it's just not what's been done in the past. In the past, you've set your objectives at the appraisal, reported back on what you've achieved in the last 12 months and what you what went well, what didn't go to well, why it didn't happen, and then reassessed your, your, your priorities for the next year. So. I think if we can build on that so that we got some perhaps key key measures in that, then yes, it, it would at least ensure that things are happening at a regular basis. Um, but it, it does, it needs a bit of work behind the scenes to identify what the council believe are the key performance indicators they want to drive the business with. And, and I presume that be our responsibility together with Gareth on the documentation mm. and the, um, the job description in order to establish those. Jim? Yeah, it's, it's just if the, um, the document that we're looking at, uh, document two, yeah? Yeah. Um, talks about um, objectives and, 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 and targets and stuff at the end, yeah? Uh -huh. But in the beginning, there's no review of... of, of uh, of, of performance against those objectives, which would seem to be, uh, if, if we're going to set, um, um, you know, key objectives, uh, training, uh, 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 training actions, surely the first part of any review process should be to go back to look at those and say, yeah, let's look at, yeah, that's what I did. With my staff when I undertook their appraisals, the starting point was what had been set. Now, if this document is what we're going to use potentially in the future, yeah, if there's target setting at the end, the first bit of it needs to be, yeah, um, yes. how have you performed against what we agreed last year? Yeah, can, can I suggest rather than <clears throat> trying to work our way through this now that we've got till next January to sort it out? And if we use this as a uh, as a um, template, Tem template, yeah, yes. Um, any any uh, changes we we can agree prior to the appraisal. Yeah, mm. is that, that's all right. Are you, are you happy with that, that Gareth? Yeah, I think it's a kind of combination, possibly, of the beginning of. Example one and part of example two mm -hmm. of yeah. 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 Okay then. Um, yeah. So the, the the third element was reporting. Um, now the development officer also advised that the report is shared in strict confidence with the HR committee. However. I think if the clerk is concerned that the document would not remain in confidence, I'd be happy to recommend that it was shared only between the appraisers and the clerk. I guess that will be down to Gareth. Well, as, as I said, um, I mean, in the past, it's never, I mean, the, the fact that, I think it's, the wording's a bit bad, the fact that the appraisal has taken place has to be reported to the to the committee and the outcome and the general outcomes, but I don't think the content in detail has to be shared, which is what we did last meeting, you know, you, we went through, if it had been undertaken, there were some points to be raised. And then the others were the training needs have been identified and you approved the training needs. So they, I don't see there's a problem with that at all. That, that's the elements of the report. And, uh, and, and I say all my previous uh, appraisals, they've never gone to a committee. They've not, not never gone beyond 
my line manager from my experience. Uh, but I haven't got a problem that being re the generality has been reported. And obviously, if there's issues that need to come out of it, they'll be reported again, either to full council or to other committees. If there's an issue that is preventing something happening, there'll be follow up then to say, well, we can't do this because we haven't got enough resources or we haven't got the right materials. So, yeah, it's not a problem with that. Okay. So. Uh... So can I can I just clarify what it, what it is for potentially green in terms of what's reported back then yeah. and who to? Well, it would be it would be that, and, and, that as as the standing order says, we reported that the appraisal had been done by the two mm -hmm. appraisers now. Uh, any any issues that need to be addressed as a matter of urgency. Um, or any issues that need to be referred to another committee, or to the full council, uh, are identified, um, uh, and the rest are sort of the, the, the nuts and bolts would be confidential. It's like headline figures. Can I... spe especially if you've got KPIs, you could say 60% of KPIs were hit, or 10%, or 15%, mm. as a generality. Um, but you know, then you could ask. It would be up for the appraisers to ask questions if they're not. But if those if those KPIs couldn't be achieved because of uh, resource, not, not enough time, or um, not the right equipment, for argument's sake, or not enough budget, then that would be fed in then to the various you know various streams as well. Would, would there be a problem with the uh, we we talked about targets and, and stuff with those being shared? When I undertook uh, um, appraisals with the people that, that worked for me, um, I reported back it was to a, a, a small group of governors and the things that were reported were, as you've just said, uh, any issues that had, uh, uh, had arisen um, uh, with, uh, with regards to their work and also uh, the targets that had been set just to give them a taste of the kind of thing that we will move forward on in, in the next year yeah would there be a problem with that yeah no no i'm reporting back on why targets haven't been hit if they were you know if yeah. they won't just hit then fair enough but if they were miles off yeah. i would expect people to understand why that had happened yeah i'm, t I'm talking about it that the um so you undertake an appraisal and you are set a new set of targets for the for the preceding year it's those targets I'm talking about sharing. Yeah, there wouldn't be a problem with that, would there? No, no, because that that isn't the appraisal, is it? That's, that's the basis for the appraisal. Yeah, yeah. But as I said, we've got to work out what those key performance indicators and targets are going to be over the next few months. Yeah. Any more comments, questions, questions? No. So do we need I, I to, I need to agree that um, it was a passing comment earlier, but I do think that some combination of, for example, one and two um, it would, it would jump out as being uh, a good format. Well, would you like me to, to uh, look at both and present one at, um, at a forthcoming HR meeting, uh, and if you get it in time, you can look at it and then comment on it. As I said, we've got plenty of time, because it's the, January is the time of the appraisal, so that we can, uh, we can agree what the best format is based upon a combination of the two. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, then. Uh, so, what's what's the process now, Gareth? Do we need to um, propose and second what we've agreed? Can't hear you, Gareth. Dog, dog, dog alert. Um, I think we'd have to propose to Council to slightly mend the standing order to allow the Chair and another. I would say a lot of other places I've been checking around, it's the chair of HR and the ch chairman or town mayor. Mm -hmm. So that's what they use as places. So it might be worth taking on board 
It would be the, the chair, town mayor of the council, and the chair of the staffing or HR committee. Um, that we um, that the appraisal is undertaken based on a revised form, which would be an amalgamation of examples one and two, and that um, as is currently done, really. Uh, that we continue to report the overall, you know, the headline figures and findings of the um, appraisals to the Chipsnow Committee, uh, sorry, to the Human Resources Committee, and uh, any significant issues that need to be addressed be passed on to the relevant committees or the council. So that's what you're really proposing, I. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, if we can, uh, and and and. Uh... Do we need to have that in in, uh, in a format uh, as a proposal, Gareth? Before yeah. we it? if you're willing to accept that general, I'll write it out so that it's as I said. Recommend revision of the standing order for town mayor and town chair of the committee HR to then take the appraisal, review the appraisal process based on the form uh, in line with the amalgam of those two examples mm -hmm. and third continue to report headline findings to the committee mm -hmm. and any other changes that need any other work would be reported elsewhere okay mm -hmm. everybody happy with that yeah yes okay yeah. can we can we yeah. add future targets to that when we're talking about issues yeah um, well, that, that, that would be incumbent in the fact that we're moving to a form with targets in it and yeah, yeah. It, it's it's it, it, the targets have got to be put into the system, so they'll be there as part of the appraisal. So okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I crashed my machine. Huh? The second item on uh, tonight's agenda. Um. So you've had a confidential request from a member of staff, I should say to that, and so we don't have to go into part B because the report then is based on that confidential request to look at moving to remote working method. Um, clearly the last 12 months has focused a lot of this in people's minds um, and you know, a lot of us have had to adapt to this situation quite quickly. Uh, Welsh Government are looking to make changes nationally so at least 30% of people will continue with home working because not only is it got that work-life balance but also has, as you can see, a lot of positive effects on the environment, less traffic, congestion, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, such a request must be in writing, which you've had, mm -hmm. uh, and um, I think that it's quite clear what's been said in the documentation and in Section 3.1, unless you want to answer some questions. Um, and therefore it's recommended that you agree with the statutory flexible working request for remote working as defined in the I, letter. I, I think we need to discuss this um, outside your presence, um, Gareth. So I, I would propose that we meet again because um, obviously there's concerns about health and we need to be very <coughs> careful and concerned about the of this. So without saying any more, uh, I propose that we <coughs> close this, finish this meeting off and that the HR committee meet separately in order to talk through this and um, come to a conclusion. How would we, how would we do that? <clears throat> well, we, can, we could have, we could have a, a, an outdoor meeting face to face, in fact. Socially distanced, yeah. Socially distanced. You would have to to um, reconvene the meeting and do it in part B, that's the only way you can do that. Oh. You'd have to defer it, saying that you want it considered as a part B item. Yes. Oh. Okay. That's what I'm proposing. 
Okay, so we'd have to defer it. Okay. Good. Shem, if we couldn't meet up, you, you know, um, sort of, you know, socially distanced, we could always do it on your Zoom thing, couldn't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is that, but the, because there's only five of us, the you're allowed to stick to the table for many households. Oh, right, yeah, okay. Let's, yeah, let's hook up. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Uh, are we all happy with that? Yeah, sorry. I mean, the process would be deferred. Just a minute. Sorry, Gareth, what was that? The process would be deferred to the next meeting, and it would be have to be set up by me. And then uh, we, we would have to have a part B, which you'd have to formally resolve. Mm -hmm. And somehow I would have to leave the meeting. Um, mm -hmm. And you'd probably have to make a decision and advise me. In the, mm -hmm. But basically, I would leave the meeting at that point. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it is it possible, Gareth, um, mm -hmm. to say you setting up a meeting and leaving the meeting for somebody else to set up a, a um no a, a meeting no it's not not possible no, it's got to be done by in my name and i've got to send the agenda and convene the meeting okay otherwise it's not legal okay so just right so we would we would confer with you about a meeting date and it would be on um, Starley, yes? Yeah, well, it's either been the next schedule meeting, which is sometime down, down the road. Obviously, I'm going to have to um, uh, consider the position as well, because that, that, that wasn't actually what I was expecting. Um, because, I, you know, the, the, the request, irrespective of how it's posted, there's only two members of staff and there's only one administrative officer. Yeah. So it's very difficult to comment. You know, we have to have public meeting. Um, the confidential element I thought was covered in the letter. Uh, it's just a matter of principle whether you agree with that proposal or not. It's been outlined in the report, and you know, you've got to decide whether you're going to allow it or not. And if you don't, you can have the rationale, as I said in the appendix, as to why you're not allowing it. Yeah. Okay. Such as business reasons. Is it going to affect workload? Is it going to affect all the operation of the, yeah. Yeah. Of the country, which I think I've covered in that it's not up to date. So, um, you know, I, am, I must say I'm disappointed that you don't feel you could just consider the report because the confidential element is not being made as known to anybody. Um, and, you know, and it's a matter of considering whether you think the request is agreed or not. Well, well, I still think, you know, well, I think it's a complex issue. It is. I think it's a complex issue and there are elements that we have to consider because of health considerations. Um, That's okay. That's fine. We'll continue here. Uh, propose and second to defer it then, please. Can we have a proposal? I'll propose it. And a second. Mm -hmm. Robin. Robin, yeah. Okay. okay so, thank you very much. Unless there's anything else, um, I'll declare the meeting closed. Mm -hmm.